So welcome back or welcome to the 15th edition of the RCA Training Tip Show. In today's video, we're gonna discuss a real genetic strength which makes pro cyclists such high functioning freaks and it's a genetic factor that doesn't seem to be discussed all that often on YouTube, if not at all. You see most topics on pro cyclists, when we're talking about how fast or how good they are, we seem to focus on power, weight, aerodynamics, or even elite bike handling skills, but never before have I heard someone discuss in detail symmetry or asymmetry compensation as genetic assets. That's right, this is the last video in the series with bike fitting expert Neil Stanbury, who's been fitting road cyclists for around 10 years in conjunction with being a sports physiotherapist, and today gives us a very interesting insight into a genetic strength that enables elite road cyclists to get to pro level. Now, if you've enjoyed this series with Neil, make sure you give the video a thumbs up, and also don't fret, because while this is the last video in the series, Neil has confirmed he'll be coming back for more, which is awesome news, and in the interim, I've got a new guest to welcome on the channel, whose name is Steph Cronin, and she's an expert sports dietitian and has a ton of experience working with endurance athletes and road cyclists. So if you're keen on sports nutrition and learning more about nutrition in cycling, make sure you subscribe below. If you already haven't, hit the bell to ensure you get notified of when the videos go live, and let's get into this one. Why would that be the case and why would that be in their favor yeah yeah i i call it like it's like a diagnosis of exclusion you, a lot of people have this idea that the the pros are fitted by the best people in the business which is which is why they look so good on a bike right uh, it tends to go the other way around they look really good because they're high functioning freaks right, right. You, it's very hard to ride a bike 30 hours a week with a threshold power of 350 watts so there's huge amounts of load going through your, your connective tissue it's very hard to ride that much and and not get injured if you're unless you're perfectly like really really good in terms of your symmetry and your overall function your flexibility your core strength all that stuff needs to be good so some people have to some of the pros have to really work at that stuff mm. others just win the genetic lottery and yeah. they're just awesome despite the fact that they don't stretch don't do yoga don't work on their core they're just great yes. and i meet these people all the time they're just you know, oh mate you've won the genetic lottery here you're flexible you're strong you're lean you've got massive lungs and heart capacity you, you know how how lucky are you yeah um so and then you meet the people that really work at it you know right. that have to spend six hours a week doing core strength training and yoga and stuff so this, the pros tend to get to that level. They tend to be able to train at that level because they're one of those people a lot of the time. They either work really hard at it or they've won the genetic lottery. Mm. And it tends to, let, let's say, for example, if you've got a large asymmetry, like a, like a 10 mil leg length difference, some of the pros are so good at compensating and pointing the, pointing the shorter legs, toe down or whatever, that they never know they've got a leg length difference and they ride their whole career and it's fine, right? Others who don't compensate as well, they start training in their teenage years and they, they reach 12 hours of training a week and someone says, mate, you're really talented. You know, you, should, you, could, you could turn pro if you work at this. So they start training a bit more and then their ITB starts hurting. So mm -hmm. they have to back off their training and let it rest again. Mm -hmm. And then they cycle up again and it happens again, happens again and again. And they never become a pro because they can't train to their full potential because of their shorter leg or their, their wonky foot. Have you seen that happen? Um, not directly because it's, it's longitudinal. You never, yeah. you, and you would never know if that person could have been a True. Friend. You True. would never yeah. know. Yeah. But I've certainly seen heaps and heaps of really talented people pulled out of the sport from injury mm. caused by stuff like a, like a leg length difference or, or a, a weird pedal stroke, you know. Yeah, interesting. Um, so that might happen in their teenage years. It might happen in their 20s or 30s. But... The, the pros tend to be, they tend to look so good most of the time, not because their positions are the product of an amazing bike fitter. Mm. The pros nail their own positions. Right. By the time they get here, it's very rare that you look at a pro and go, mate, your seat's 30 mils too high. You know, this is horrific. <laughs> how, how are you riding like this? Although there's yeah. a few, but very, very rare. Yeah. If, you, if you've got some old footage of Ryder Hazardale, yeah. the Canadian time trial champ, multiple yeah. Canadian time, you've got some footage of him riding up a hill. You cut that into this and see what I mean about a, right, okay. a, a not so flash position. Right. Or um, a couple of years ago in the in the tour, I remember watching an Eritrean rider on the Quebec team, the MTN Quebec team called uh, Gerg, what was his name? Oh, uh, we'll think of it later. Um, yeah. And he had one of the most asymmetrical positions I've ever seen in a pro. His left knee moved on about a thirty degree angle across the pedal stroke. It was horrific. 
And um, so you, but you rarely see that, right? right? Most of them, you look at them from the front, they look amazing. Their knees yes. are moving like pistons and they're symmetrical and powerful and they're flexible. But it, they tend to get to pro level because they're like that. Yes. Yeah, not, not so much the other way around. Yes. So it's very difficult to, to train 30 hours a week at such intensities if you've got a body that is prone to injuries because of a leg length difference or something. Yeah. So it, it, it's kind of rare, I guess, that you'd see a pro who's really dysfunctional. Mm. Or they might be dysfunctional, but they're an incredibly good compensator. Right. But um, yeah, if, you, if you've got like a, a, a serious leg length difference or a twist in your pelvis or something positionally really challenging, very, very hard to train at that level. Yes. So yeah, that's why they all look so good because the ones who look bad don't ever get to that level. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. So, um, and some of the ones that, that occasionally you think, how is this guy riding a bike? And they're still, they're still fine. You know, they're just those really high level compensators. Yeah. Better than you and me perhaps. Yes, mm. absolutely. All right, well, thanks for your time. I think it's time for you to show me your um, hill drop on the trainer. We'll go <laughs> yeah. and do it now. Yeah, this will be interesting. Yeah, all right, mate. <laughs> thanks very much. Cheers.